Okay, now how do I push back up? Yeah, what? Well, um, crap, there comes the war boss on my... I just gave these guys sniper rifles just as a part to see how they would do. And up, there's that. He's not trying to attack or just trying to set up. Devastators saved their butts right there. Oh, but they use Swamp them because of that knob upgrade. But that's not going to stop them from the Dreadnought, though. He says, no, you're not doing that. And now those guys are going to die. Warboss in my face. Max down, saves his Sluggish Squad. Here comes the bombs again. Oh, and all those guys are down. Uh, and I'm also down. But all because of the armor upgrade I used. Uh, I'm back on the field again. And the Plasma Cannon once again does its work. So while all that was happening, they eat a Plasma Cannon round. And they are just nothing but orc parts now. And the Warboss is also dead again. I'm reinforcing my squads, and once again, his squads, see that, he was able to still save his squads, but I, uh, once again, I held the field. <sighs> Mercy. But now, so would you say that you usually encounter an orc player like this that just keeps, like, a specific, these specific squads alive? and just uses them the entire game because I always thought that orc players would just like lose squads and then get another one and another one and just overwhelm you with numbers because you know they're so cheap. Well that is true but at the same time uh, eventually it's just like if you invest all your requisitions so early on like that you're not going to be able to have points for power and you're not going to be able to you know. It's like yeah your orcs boys are going to take casualties, but uh, yeah, this is a pretty smart, or I would say this is smarter than average orc player. I mean, I have encountered several orc players that just tried to mass in like huge amounts of infantry and then they're just all worthless once a dreadnought comes out because they have no counter to it, or the counter to it is surprisingly weak when compared to my support teams. And as you can see here, they're harassing my generators, uh, stick bombs, tried to stick bomb my sniper team, but I was able to move them out of the way. And uh, Dreadnought forces all those guys away. And now I'm going to harass his generators and I'm going to turn them into rubble. Or I can't remember if I turn them into rubble or if I steal them. I think I'm going to steal them, it looks like. And he's going to get out knobs now. And, uh, I'm just throwing this out there because I usually, I don't know why, but... When I think of the word knob in this game, I just think of the phrase, touch my knob. I don't know why I think that, but it's just, I don't know, it's just a weird name. <laughs> Apothecary getting, my Apothecary getting pinned by all that shoot of fire. I just wanted to decap the point, and I do, and the suppression effect from the big shooters definitely doesn't last too long. He's throwing grenades on top of my tax. I try to move, but oh, he put him right in their retreat path. One guy goes down. Uh, but now the... Oh, and I'm pinning him down with full auto while he's getting hit by the Devastator and the Tax and everybody else. Ouch. Forcing his war boss away. And the Stick Bomb is getting hit by the Plasma Cannon around meant for the war boss. They are now hurt and only able to get out two grenades. They are in full retreat now. And now to, now I'm getting a tank to support my uh, support team crew to keep putting on fire. And now I'm just gonna hold these two points, I think. I've already beat Cat. I know I've got him hurting bad. And he has one shooter squad that's now totally useless. It just has one guy left in it. And he's getting up, uh, up pumping his uh, resources into the knobs. Getting the knob squad uh, up to par to try and deal with my dreadnought. Or, well, he doesn't even know I have a tank out. And here he comes again. Trying to attack that point, and now I'm going to harass him with my Predator. Putting some rounds down. And just to add insult to injury, I'm putting down an orbital strike right there. Oh, mercy. Caught his war boss, caught one of the knobs, and he says the GG. And there he goes flying. And that's it. And as for the stick, bo stick bombers, uh, looks like they got caught up in 
some suppressive fire from my de devastators. There's, they're done. And yeah, they're about to die. You know, I'm surprised. The, you know, we didn't keep going for a little bit longer. But I guess when he saw that I had a tank and he knew I had a dreadnought, who was also attacking the other squ uh, shooter squad over here, trying to decap the victory points. Basically, that squad was just thrown away. He, he knows it was dead. Uh, he knows the knobs won't be able to catch a kiting tank while they were also getting shot up. They were getting shot up by a sniper, they were getting shot up by tax and my apothecary, and it's going to back up and blast them. And, you know, it, he was just done by that point. I think I had just broken his spirit. <laughs> there was no more of a fight for De Wah left in him. Wow, that position, that posture the war boss is in, it looks like he's yielding. <laughs> <laughs> I yield to you. You're the bigger one. Oh, yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> uh, but uh, what did you think of that? So. You used weapon support teams to counter his blobs. Right. And when he split his blob up, we had the dreadnought plus the weapon support teams. Yeah, yeah. I, the dreadnought is a nice uh, support to the support teams because you know guys are gonna try to melee them to hell, and having just a big mech there to protect them. You know, that's pretty imposing to any melee guys thinking of trying to get in and tangle them up because they, you know, they're not going to survive that. So. No, I, I thought it was going to, you know, I think it might have been good if he, um, pull out some, you know, I don't know, I forget what those rocket guys are called. Oh, the, uh, rocket boys? Or. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Fighting artillery back with artillery probably could have helped him there. Uh, I, d I haven't played orcs enough in the late game to tell you that. Uh, but I do know that, yeah, what, it's like... I've heard people say knobs are pretty... don't help too much because... You know, because of just what I was doing. I was kiting, I was doing all that, and... Just none of their abilities are able to deal with that unless, of course, you count Frenzy, you know, which does make them invulnerable. And that would definitely make, you know, I am afraid when they are going to bull rush me like that. But uh, obviously it just wasn't enough. It was too little too late. And, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's kind of tough for orcs to deal with Space Marines, to be honest, because they just do not have the quality that the Space Marines do. And a good Space Marine commander is gonna, you know, try to mitigate that blob at uh, numbers advantage whenever possible. And just cut his troops down, because in a head-to-head -head fight, orcs were gonna lose, unless they have superior numbers. You know, he was, you know, in a, you gotta give him credit. In an early game, he was doing quite a number on me, but I was able to come back on him quite a bit once I pulled out the Devastators. What's interesting to me, though, is that he didn't pull out Storm Boys. I think those guys are a little uh, underused for, you know, I guess he figured he could do it all with just his shooter squads, which, yeah, you could, as you can saw, but obviously it wasn't enough. I think Storm Boys, having Storm Boys would have just probably exacerbated that advantage more, but that's just my take. I'm not saying that it certainly would have, maybe, maybe not, I would say. I'm not an experienced enough orc player to tell you, but uh, the times I've used it, yeah, it's been very... Storm Boys have been very helpful in tangling up weapons teams uh, early on. 